They say professional colorists are able to color grade an image without even looking at it, only by looking at the scope. So that video got a lot of attention. It got well over half a million views. And in this episode, I'm gonna do a slightly different scopes tutorial. It's not gonna be like your regular ones where we go through, here's the waveform, it measures black here, it measures white here, here's the vector scope. I'm not doing any of that because I've already done it. Five years ago, I did an episode. I checked it out before I started recording. It's all still absolutely relevant. The scopes haven't actually changed that much. I'll put a link to that in the description. There's loads of other ones on YouTube as well, but I don't think anyone's actually addressed what am I actually reading? What am I looking for as a professional colorist? What am I looking for in the scopes? Which scope do I use in which situation? And I'm gonna address that in this episode. We're gonna look at the individual scopes and each merit. And then I'm gonna look at some footage at the end. I'm gonna analyze it and explain exactly what I'm doing. So what am I thinking about? Now, if you wanna see six colorists doing a real challenge where they can only use one scope, you wanna check out this series oh, here. Oh my God. Holy sh I will give them a time limit. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. Right, let's take a look at first the waveform. So I'm gonna go and change my preferences. Again, I've got a tutorial on how to use the waveform or all these menus do. So I'm not going through that in this. We're just gonna focus on what am I doing with the waveform. So just to remind you, it's basically reading from left to right. So we've got left to right. And to show you that, what we can do, if I actually play the image back, you can see the actual images in here. You can see the characters walking through the shot. So what's great with this is I can look at a scene and actually I'm actually looking at the real scene on the waveform. So this helps me with things like, do I need to put a power window in a certain area? Is the brightness not enough on one side? You can tell that because you're looking at the actual image. You've got a trace of the image here. So this is really important in the waveform. So looking at this image, what I'm seeing straight away is we've got good contrast going on. This shot's already been color managed and I can see down here, my blacks are good. They're not getting crushed here. So I'm not clipping, I'm not going below zero. I've got a bit of headroom up here. The rule is not to have whites or your highlights sitting right at the top. The only thing that goes at the top is your peak white. So I've got a nice bit of headroom here. It works on the shot. The scope is just giving me that information. I'm looking at the image to see, is it pleasing to me? And it is. And it's also good for exposure. I can see everything sitting really nicely in the image. I've got a good spread here. We've got a nice amount of contrast going on. But is it any good for looking at saturation? Well, let's crank up the saturation here. I'm just using primary methods in here. There's many different ways of doing saturation, but for this tutorial, I'm gonna stick mainly to the primaries here. Let's bring up the saturation. That is really excessive. This is really horrible saturation, but I can't tell that from the waveform. It did move, but I can't tell what's actually happening just looking at this. This still looks like a nice balanced image on the waveform. Even if I put colorize on, which allows you to see the colors going on, I still can't really tell what's going on. I can't tell that these are probably illegal colors. They're well out of scope. I just can't tell that from looking at that. So the waveform isn't any good for saturation. So let's reset that and let's have a look at the parade. So if I click in here, we've got our red, green, and blue channels. We're seeing just a third of the screen. So again, if I play the shot, we see the characters moving through. We're looking at an actual trace of the image. I can identify certain areas now. I can identify these two characters here. So I can see if that needs adjusting in the scope. So is the parade any good for contrast? Yes, I can see my black level and my white levels here. I can see that I've got a good spread. Let's just take contrast out completely. What you actually end up is with a gray image and a flat line, that's zero contrast. This is the same in the waveform as well. So if I go to my waveform and show you, you just get that flat line. That's the parade. Let's reset our contrast. And now we've got normal contrast back in. If I increase contrast, you see that the scope expands. So it's great for looking at contrast. So can I measure exposure and brightness? I can, but it's a lot easier on a waveform. If we go back to the waveform, when you've got this set, you're looking at the whole image. I'm gonna take that colorize off because I don't like having it on. So when I'm looking at the colorize information, I'm gonna be looking at the vector scope or I'm gonna be looking at the parade. So the parade's a great tool, but it also has the advantage of I can actually check my balance on here. So if you look at the top here, where our whites are, you see we've got really good white balance going on here, but if I draw a line across the top, we have in fact got blue slightly higher. So if I get to my gain tool here, and I'm just gonna bring that down slightly, I've now got a slightly more appealing white balance on here. It's just got a nicer look to it. It's not quite as cold. Is it any good for saturation? Again, let's crank it up. You can see that we're getting peaks going on here, but I can't really tell what's happening. I know that in the red channel, we've got something peaking in here, but it, it's giving me a better indicator than the waveform, but it's still not the right tool to use for saturation. So I'm using the waveform to check my exposure and my contrast, and I use the parade just to check the balance between the red, green, and blue channels. All right, let's move on to the histogram. 
This again is splitting us into red, green, and blue channels. Let's play through our image. And this time you see that we can't actually identify parts of the image. I can't see this character. I can't see this character. All we're seeing is a spread from black to white, and it's showing me how the pixels are spread between the red, green, and blue channels. So is this any good for contrast? Yes, it is. We've got a nice wide spread here. So we've got good scope across the entire range. We're not going right up to our highlights here, but we haven't got anything that's super white, nothing peak white. Let's just increase our contrast. You can see that moving really nicely on the histogram. Now, what else is good for, if I reset that, is it will show me when I've got pixels that are hitting hard at black. So this is a really good way of checking that you're not crushing your black or you're going below zero, which means you're gonna be losing information in your blacks. So let's have a look what happens here if I just move my lift up a little bit. There, we got a nice bit of image coming back in here now, which means we're getting a bit more detail back in here. And just to add to that, there's nothing wrong with having your blacks going below zero as long as that's your intention. So if you enjoy these pro colorists, deeper insights into things like scopes, let me know in the comments what else you'd like me to cover. And if you're gaining knowledge, think about subscribing. I spent a long time making these as good as I can for you. And let YouTube know if you're enjoying it by hitting the like button for me. Okay, let's have a look at the vector scope. And I think this is the one where most people have a problem really understanding what they're looking at. So let's take a look. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna check my settings. I don't normally have the color eyes on, but I'll leave it on for this episode. Let's put the skin tone indicator on for later. And what are we looking at? First of all, let's play the shot. Can we see the characters in here? No, so it's not really giving us a defined image just by looking at the vector scope. I can't really see the shapes or the outlines, but what I can see is that there's a lot of red going on and the bigger the trace, the more heavy the saturation is. So what we're trying to do is keep just inside or not outside of these boxes here. So we've got a lot of red going on, I can see that. And we can also see that we're pretty well balanced because most of the image is sitting in this crosshair. All right, so we've got a nice bit of trace coming out, but it's not, for example, let me just show you extreme, if I did that, we're clearly far too warm. It looks very orange because we're now set in the red and yellow quadrant. So I'm gonna reset that. So that's what it's initially looking at. So we can't see our image, but we can see that we've got saturation going on. So can a vector scope measure contrast? Well, let's increase the contrast here. So it looks like it can because it's moving, but I can't analyze how much contrast I've got in that image looking at that. That could just be very heavy saturated reds. So it's not analyzing contrast. The reason it's moved is because when you increase contrast, you're increasing saturation as well. So this is also not the tool for reading exposure and for luminance levels, but it is great for reading saturation. So if I just take all the saturation out, what you're left with is no trace at all because there's no saturation. So we've just got a dot in the middle. Put the saturation back in and there we go. And let me increase it just to show you. But the vector scope has lots of other uses as well. I think classically people think it's for checking the skin tone, which it is. Now I'm really happy where the skin tone is sitting here. It's sitting just below the line but I'm happy with that. If as long as you're consistently above, below it, or on it, that's all that matters. This line is not the law, as it were. So, but I'm gonna move it anyway, just for the purposes of this tutorial. I'm gonna to go to the two times zoom. This is really useful for just zooming in and seeing what's going on. I'm gonna use my color slice, for example. I'm just gonna change the hue of it. I'm just gonna line it up with that line. Now we're definitely sitting above it now, so maybe I'm gonna to go into offset. I wouldn't normally do this. I was quite happy with that shot, but it's sitting much more on the line now, just so you can see how to manipulate it. But the other use for the vector scope is analyzing your color contrast. So we've got this wall going on here. If I wanna get that classic teal orange look going on, the reason for that is because it complements skin tone. If I can make this line, this is the blue, so this is blue and cyan, this is measuring the wall. If I can make that line come around a little bit more so it's absolutely opposite, we should get a nicer effect on here. So if I go to my blue, I'm gonna adjust the hue, I'm just looking at the vector scope, I'm bringing that round, and we've made that a little bit more teal, and if I just enable and disable that, you can see that's actually made quite a big difference. Remember, it's only a measurement tool. You wanna to be looking at the image. Am I happy with that? Am I, do I prefer it like that? Do I prefer it like that? That is the creative part of it. So let's analyze a few shots and get feedback from the scope. So I'm gonna to go to four up display. Let's change that to be the waveform. And we're gonna go on to this shot here. So really quickly off the scopes, the feedback I'm getting is that we've not got enough contrast. Our blue channel's sitting a little bit low. The histogram's telling us that as well. We're not clipping anything here. And the vector scope is just showing me that everything is sitting in this quadrant here. So it's sitting in the red yellow quadrant. Looking at the image, we can see that it's very warm. This whole image is very warm. So we need to be aware of that. We've also got this red spike, which is clearly his jumper, but let's play back the image. 
just check that nothing really weird happens, like the camera doesn't turn around or something like that. So we're good to go. Let's increase our highlights a little bit. I'm not trying to get to the top. I just want to increase them a bit. I'm going to bring this red channel down slightly so it matches a little bit. Something like that. I'm going to bring my blue channel up a little bit. And that's much better now. Uh, still needs a bit more contrast in there. Something like that. Now, I'm just keeping an eye on this red spike on the vector scope. Now, the red can be brought down in several ways. I'm going to choose the color slice. We could just pull the saturation out of it like that. That's a really easy option, but it doesn't actually look that nice. So I'm going to reset that. Let's try increasing density. What I'm going to do is pull a bit, a little bit of saturation out of that as well. Something like that. So that is much better. It's not perfect. It's not finished, but I'm just getting the initial feedback off those scopes. So this shot is clearly in a mess. We've got a huge spike going over here on the vector scope towards yellow. This is going to need to be addressed. We're going to have to get some blue in there somehow. We can see that on the histogram here, the blue channel is very low. It's very low on the parade. We've got not a lot going on in terms of contrast. We can see that clearly on the image. There's a couple of little spikes here. That is this lighting going on here. I'm not too worried about that. I'm not, for the sake of that image, I'm not gonna worry about those too much. So what we're gonna do, I think the vector scope's gonna be our best friend here. I'm just gonna put that into full screen mode for a second. So let's see what we can do. Let's start off with offset and I'm gonna push that over and that looks absolutely terrible. So I'm gonna reset that. Let's try gain. Now, the tool I would normally use for this would be the RGB mixer, but I'm not going to cover that in this episode. I'll put a link to an episode where I actually corrected this shot using the RGB mixer. I'll put a link to that in the description. All right, so the gain is actually helping us here. That's getting us more neutralized. We're pushing the yellow towards the blue, using the vector scope to be a good guide for us, but constantly checking the image as well. So all this really needs now, if I go back to my four up display, put that back to be a waveform, is we need to sort out our gain. So let's bring that up again i'm not worried that these are blowing out here that's this it doesn't really matter not in this shot maybe a bit more gamma in there something like that and it's just bring our shadows down a little bit but we really have saved that shot this shot is a classic one that can trip you up if you're relying on your scopes because all the information is sat down in the lower third really and that's because it's shot at night so i want it to be sat down there this is a case of not using the scopes to just fill the whole scope up I want to keep it sat down so it's looking good. In fact, the only thing I'm concerned about a little bit, the histogram just shows that we're almost clipping. In fact, we are safe, but we're almost clipping. I just want to see what a little bit of lift would do to that shot. And it's fine. It's not making that. It's, we're definitely not clipping. So it's good where it was. The only other thing to look out for on my vector scope, if I just increase the trace there so you can see it better, you can see this blue line is getting very close to here. That is obviously the car interior here. Again, nothing to worry about, but if it was really heavily saturated, we could go again to our color slice tool and maybe look at increasing the density on that or something like that just to help affect it. So the other thing I'm noticing here is that the vector scope is not sat in the middle. It's not sat central. So I just want to prove something to you that it doesn't actually matter. So if I can push my offset over and centralize that, We've pushed the blue a little bit further, but now that's sitting nice in the middle, which is what people think it should be. But looking at the image, that doesn't look right. The shot should look warm, even though it's nighttime and everything should be sat down. So this is a classic case of, I want that to be red in this quadrant. So I'm gonna put that back by pressing undo and this is good. So creatively, I'm happy. So this shows you there's not one scope to beat them all. It's really there just as a visual aid. It's technically giving you feedback on what's happening on the image. The creative part of it is still down to you. These are great when your eyes are getting a bit tired, when you just want to check if you are actually white balanced. But remember, you can't grade with just scopes. Or can you? What, just one scope? Oh my God. Try practicing, have a go with it. Push and pull them. Get used to the feedback information that you're getting off them. Look after yourselves, enjoy your scopes. I'll see you in the next episode.